we come back on the other side, you may have your own thoughts about Mark Emery. Now doing time in the U.S., Canada's Prince of Pot. So well known here in London, Ontario, where he used to run that little bookstore on Richmond Street. We'll get an update on uh, the Prince of Pot, how he's doing in a prison in the U.S. from a friend here in London. When we come back in just a moment here on London Today on News Talk 1290 CJBK. You're listening to London Today with Andy Udman. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can email londontoday at cjbk.com or call 519-643-1290. One toke over the line, Brewer and Shipley. Canada's Prince of Pot, Mark Emery, doing five years in a U.S. prison. Hadn't heard anything for a while. Interesting story by Chip Martin in today's uh, London Free Press, giving us an update uh, based uh, mainly on an interview with uh, Gord Mood, who is the owner of L.A. Mood uh, Comics and Games. So we thought we'd touch base uh, with Gord to get an update on uh, a fellow that most Londoners would uh, recognize the name. Gord, appreciate you joining us. Oh, thanks, Andy. Mark Emery. I'm sure before I even say one single word, everybody has uh, uh, an opinion about uh, Mark Emery. Love him, they hate him, and uh, a lot of folks uh, in between. Uh, Gord, you met Mark working in his bookstore years ago. I did. Uh, It was a great experience, and uh, he's done a lot of great work. I can't uh, say anything bad against him. Well, I'm not going to say anything bad against him. I never agreed with his politics, never agreed with his thoughts on pot, never agreed with his uh, um, eagerness to, uh, to break the law. But in another, in another sense, I, there are things about Mark Emery that I so much admire. And when he talks about the people who use dope and who smoke pot, uh, he often goes back to their childhood and talks about uh, the pain that they endure and that uh, they have a difficult life. And uh, he, he seems to me uh, to be a very complex man, but at the heart of it, he has a heart and has a lot of compassion for people. Right. I think he sees that uh, it's immoral to put people in jail for growing a plant. That's all I, the way I see it anyway. Okay, but uh, back to my point about him having uh, a lot of compassion for people. Or does he? Or right. is he just oh, in this drug thing to get rich and famous? No, I think, uh, I think you're right. I think it's uh, about uh, understanding that it's cruel to put people in jail for that kind of activity. And he has an understanding of what uh, freedom means. I think he has a, a definitive understanding of philosophy and politics. In other words, you agree with his politics? Well, I don't agree with everything in his politics because he's an anarchist and I'm not an anarchist. But uh, generally speaking, we converge on many issues. What is an anarchist? Um, well, an anarchist is the belief that uh, government is a unnecessary evil. Basically, that's a pretty strong term, anarchist for for having that belief. I mean, there are a lot of people who believe we have way too much government, but they aren't anarchists by any means. Right, um, but he does state that he is, so I, I have no qualms about yeah, that. That's where, that's where I always come back to, to uh, Mark Emery. Just when I start to cut him some slack and give him credit for be, uh, having certain uh, virtues, then I'm reminded that, in a sense, uh, he and I are on two different planets. Right, but uh, I think in general that he has an understanding that the, the state itself can... Um, you know, overstep its bounds. In the case of, <clears throat> in, in the fact that he's in five years in jail in the United States for selling seeds is, uh, is a statement of that fact. Well, I, I always like the way you simplify it, which I, I think is totally unfair to the argument. If, uh, in jail for selling seeds, well, yeah, but remember what the seeds are and what the loss is. Right, but I, I mean, in terms of logic, though, they are seeds. It's, uh, well, there are ways of phrasing anything to make it look like uh, it's okay, but, G- Gord, let's move on to... Okay. I think we all know the history of uh, Mark Emery. Uh, he is doing five years at the D. Ray James Prison near Folkestone, 
And something told me it wouldn't be too long before we'd, we'd hear stories of him annoying the local prison officials. And sure enough, here's this story this morning. How is he annoying the folks at the D. Ray James prison? Well, he got a job working for the library. Uh, and the uh, word went out on the Internet, on Facebook, etc., to send him books. And he was very successful at getting his uh, supporters to send books <clears throat> into the library and and you know help out in you know putting new books in <clears throat> because there hasn't been any new books for for years in that facility and uh i guess they got upset at doing all the work and the warden was away for a while and they fired him uh and then when the warden came back they reinstated him <laughs> so you know that's kind of typical they didn't want to do the work uh, involved in the, you know, in, in that was required to better the library. Tell me about the kinds of books that you and others have been sending to Mark Emery. Oh, just regular, you know, there's bestsellers. I, I sent him some comic books. I sent him, uh, I sent him Kill Shakespeare, which is uh, actually uh, by some Canadian guys who are actually going to be at the store on the weekend. Um, and he really enjoyed that. But I, I sent him a bunch of comic books and uh, sent him a book called Enemy Ace, which was about uh, uh, some um, flyers in Second World War and uh, sent him Marvels. So, you know, graphic novels and books and just stuff like that. Okay. It's not like they're all, it's all literature promoting drugs. Oh, no, they wouldn't allow that, I don't think. No, I was going to say. Uh, so it's not so much the content of these books and comic books and so on that this prison objects to. It's just is creating a lot of work for them. I think that's what it was. And they didn't like the, the fact that it flooded in and there was all this work to do. So, But they did reinstate him, and uh, the warden has uh, worked out the issues. And, and Mark's doing all the work anyways. He's not only doing work uh, in the library, he's also doing paralegal work for people there. Because uh, the, the prison consists mostly of 97% Spanish-speaking people. And uh, so a lot of them cannot do uh, any, you know, paperwork that requires English. So he's helping out in that area, too. How's Mark's Spanish coming along? Well, he's learning Spanish. Uh, he wrote me saying that he's learning Spanish, and uh, I'm sure he'll catch on to that pretty quickly. Okay, so this is, uh, what, which part of Georgia is this prison in? And, uh, Near the Florida border there. The, uh, and that explains why the population is uh, heavily Spanish. Yeah, it's uh, mostly uh, Mexican, Honduran, Cuban. Uh, there's some Canadians that think there's, there's some people from the Caribbean. There's, you know, there's a mix, but mostly people from Mexico. Yeah, one thing I know about Mark Emery, he would make the best of uh, any bad situation. What has he shared with you about what he sees as his um, uh, making a best of a bad situation? What, what, what's his goal? What's his philosophy about his time in prison? Well, I think he wants to better the treatment of the prisoners there because, uh, you know, there's nobody there that speaks Spanish. Uh, that, I think that's pretty atrocious that they have a prison set up with all these people who don't speak that language. I think that they should at least have somebody there working who speaks that language. Uh, they, don't, they don't provide any uh, amenities that Americans uh, would get in an American prison. Um, I think even in Canada, I think we treat our foreign prisoners better than the Americans do. So. Okay, so in a sense that everybody who's in this prison is, is, is uh, a foreigner. Yes, it's a, it's a facility for foreigners. And it's a, it's a, it's a low-security prison. You've talked about, uh, in your conversation with Chip, about um, Mark Emery having his ups and downs. Um, uh, hopefully the ups weren't drug-related. The downs. Tell me about the downs. Well, he, he got fired from the library. I think that, you know, that upset him. The fact that uh, the, they have these annoying, um, you know, fire um, drills that... Uh, are consistent throughout the day all the time uh you know why is there a great danger of fire in the prison somehow uh, i think it's just incompetent i think they have it pretty from my um reading of what's going on there is just um it seems like blatant incompetence do you see a hope 
for Mark Emery at some point, putting aside his ridic what I think are ridiculous notions about anarchism, uh, going mainstream and making a positive contribution to society? I don't think he has to go mainstream to make a contribution. I mean, he already has. He's done a lot of really good things. Uh, you know, you may disagree, but, you know, the Sunday shopping, uh, you know, there was a whole number of issues that he brought forth. Uh, not just the marijuana issue, but even on the marijuana issue, I see that going forward as a positive contribution. So It always seemed to, to me, uh, just again, when I was going to cut Mark Emery some slack, that his motivation in life was uh, somehow being bitter for something in his childhood and thinking he's just going to get even with anybody who represents authority. No, I don't see it that way. I mean, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I think you're mistaken. I think that he ha he's a principled person and that he's frustrated that other people aren't as principled as him. Um, takes a lot of uh, uh, um, self-confidence and even hood spot to think that way given where he is right now well no I think it's a little bit like Gomer Pyle in the army when the sergeant comes along and says Gomer you're out of step and he says no they are yeah well I, I think in a way that's true but you have to understand that he's willing to pay the price for his belief he's not unwilling he is, however, disappointed that the Canadian government was willing to give up the Canadian citizens so easily to the United States when it shouldn't have jurisdiction in Canada. Someone who marches to their own drummer, as Mark Emery has done all his life, somehow hears applause that the rest of us aren't hearing. What applause is he hearing? Does he think someday he's going to be put in some a hall of fame or be given some award? Or what motivates him? I think principle motivates him. I think that he actually believes the ideas that he espouses, and I don't think that he is motivated by fame uh, in that way. He actually wants the world to change, and he thinks that he can change the world for the better. Does he want us all to do dope? I don't think so. He thinks people who do it shouldn't be abused. Well, it's not like he's promoting dope just for people who need it for medicinal purposes. No, that's true, but it's just that, you know, you can... It, it, it's a question of philosophy. Um, it, it, in my mind, he, he, he has read a lot. He understands philosophy. So if you understand that there are several different schools of thought in philosophy about the issues of personal autonomy, you'd understand that he thinks that individuals should be able to decide what reasonable, peaceful pursuits you should be allowed to do. Uh, this goes back to the American Revolution. It goes back to, you know, the, John Locke. Uh, you know, it, it, you just have to decide, is it correct for the state to take certain actions against people who are not harming others? Well... We so that's, that's what he, I, that I actually truly believe he thinks that way. Well, he must, because nobody's been able to convince him. Nobody's been able to con uh, convince him to come back from uh, the dark side, the, the uh, side of being against everything and, and suggesting, more or less, that we should all be sitting around uh, smoking dope. I've never quite understood Mark Emery, but there are moments, I have to give him the credit, there are moments when I sense a certain amount of compassion, a certain amount of uh, reaching out to help people who've had an unfortunate a start in their life, but uh, I just don't think the answer is uh, sitting around uh, smoking dope. Uh, Gord, uh, we have just a couple of moments left. Let me uh, ask you uh, what the timelines are for uh, for um, this Prince of Pot, Mark Emery, in terms of coming back to Canada to serve the rest of his uh, prison sentence. Is that his next goal? Yeah, that's, that's a possibility. It's up to the current government to decide that. Um, that uh, whether he will, you know, spend another four years in the American facility or if he can be moved to Canada. Why would we want him back? Is there any effort well, he's on... he's a Canadian citizen. I think that we have to understand that Canadian citizens ought to be treated by a Canadian government in Canada. 
Um, I happen to believe that the government of Canada should have full jurisdiction over Canadians on Canadian soil when actions are done in Canada. Even if the crimes are committed against other governments, other countries? Well, I think we have a right as Canadians to give the finger to the Americans when their policies suck. I do not believe that if we have a... Uh, for example, there are many things against the law in other countries throughout the world that we would not send people to Saudi Arabia, for example, for blasphemy in Canada. So I think the same thing should be uh, done in this case. In Canada, we have Canadian laws for Canadians. In America, they have American laws for Americans. No, they, have they do not have jurisdiction over Canadians. They have American laws for anyone who uh, lives in that country. And who, right. Yeah. And, but uh, Mark and, didn't and a, live in the United States. No, I understand that. But uh, certainly his influence went south of the border, shall we say. Yeah, exactly. And they yeah. can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. Well, Gord, I think you've just uh, pretty much laid out where you stand a lot of these issues. So uh, you're pushing, in my uh, humble point of view, you're, you're over there with Mark, which is a whole... Uh, <laughs> On that particular issue, I am. But, uh, you know, what's important here is that we understand that, that Canadians should be free of American law. I think we can agree on that. Well, no, I don't. I, not if we influence Americans and, and uh, their lives directly. But, uh, Gordon, but, that so wasn't one, the... One more thing, though. Yeah, don't sure. forget that slavery was legal in the United States, but it, it wasn't here. And we welcomed people escaping from slavery in the United States. I'm sure you wouldn't have been on their side at that time. Well, let's uh, let's leave it there because it's a nice, harmonious way to end the interview. We uh, disagree on so many things, but I'll tell you, every time I visit Uncle Tom's cabin in Dresden, I'm uh, I'm almost ashamed. I am ashamed of uh, the tradition that uh, that we come from. But so, right. Gord, appreciate you okay, joining us you. this morning. Okay. Uh, right. Anyway, Mark Emery. Um, what do I say? The Americans. Uh, why don't you look after him? Why don't we leave Mark Emery in that prison down there in Georgia, and they can pay the bills. Uh, we don't need Mark Emery up here. Short break. We'll be back with some concluding thoughts in just a moment here on London Today on News Talk 1290, CJB. And I see where the line uh, is lighting up with uh, the name Bob Metz, who would like to say a few things about uh, his uh, comrade in arms, in uh, a sense, Mark Emery. Bob, I appreciate you joining us. Morning, Andy. Um, yeah, comrade in arms at one time until we we parted ways. But uh, you know, I think a lot of people don't understand that Mark has been extradited not because he was selling pot seeds, but because of his activism and the fact that it was effective. Even in the extradition hearings, this came out consistently. So he's really been put Act in jail as essentially an act of censorship. Okay, activism on what specific issue? On the pod issue. On the pod issue. Because he's been, he's, he's been, he had been funding um, all sorts of political movements and lobby groups and activists who, you know, would share his point of view, including, among others, the NDP in Canada. And, of course, he started the Marijuana Party in B.C. So it, it was completely a political action, the whole thing. So while he may be highly well, while he may be highly annoying to the Americans and to lots of Canadians, of course, where was it specifically that he crossed the line that got him into jail in the, in the U.S.? Well, I personally think if you want to see the story and witness the whole thing yourself, and, and you, you don't need me to tell you, watch uh, just check out on YouTube and look up a, a documentary called The Principle of Pot which was uh, created by uh, lawyer Paul McKeever, who's never met Mark Emery, but did a four-hour documentary. It's like watching 60 Minutes. Okay, Bob, it, let me ask you about where you and uh, Mark um, decided to take your separate ways. What was the issue? What was the circumstance? Oh, that's a, that's a biggie, and it's also highlighted in that, in that um, documentary. But the basic thing was, Mark was a believer, and he came to this by... Uh, to this belief by doing a research project on a calendar of individual freedom in which he highlighted the dark days and, 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 the, and the bright days in the history of freedom. And he discovered an interesting pattern. 
We have one minute yeah, left. He, you should he discovers that democracy is not the road to freedom. Democracy is always the road away from freedom, and that whenever an oppressive law was lifted, it was as a consequence of some sort of civil disobedience. And whether it was Martin Luther King or whether it was Gandhi or whoever, these are Marx's ideals. Okay, and, and where, that's did, where, where did he's coming from? And this is kind of why we parted way. I, I thought, yes, democracy's got a bad record on this, but it can be changed. But it just we never had a political party to look at it in a different way. Give me your best uh, fifteen seconds about who Mark Emery really is, and whether you think he's a good or bad influence. Well, Mark's um, a totally honest person. You know, he's kind kind of guy. You shake a hand with him, and you make a deal better than being on paper and um, that's the main thing about mark mark demanded up front honesty he was never ever um you know he would never do anything behind your back kind of thing everything was up front and that's another reason why he's sitting in a jail cell wow bob another time we'll have more time to talk we have to let it go uh, go, go bob metz commenting on uh, mark emory well, there's our two hours. Thanks so much for joining us. Please, eyes on the road, hands on the wheel. Please hang up and drive so you arrive alive. And again, hats off for a wonderful uh, weekend in terms of uh, safety.